Hi everyone, Ethan here with another Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial. Today we'll just be reviewing basic audio transitions within Adobe Premiere Pro. So we have our sequence set up, New England Trip, and we have some clips here that we've already edited together. However, I'm not going to use any of the audio on audio track A1. So for right now, I'm just going to click link selection to deselect that. I'm going to click and drag to lasso all of the audio on audio track A1. I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard to remove that audio. Now I'm going to navigate over to our project panel and I'm going to draw down audio where I have my audio files already picked out and I'm just gonna click and drag these over to the timeline and I'll place each file on audio track 1 and audio track 2 the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold an option and I'm gonna scroll down on my mouse and this is going to increase the size of audio track a1 so I can see the decibels and waveforms a little bit better from there I'm gonna hit plus on my keyboard so I can zoom in on my timeline so the idea here is to fade from the music in audio track a1 and and we're gonna fade into the music from audio track A2. First thing that I have to do is cut down the audio from audio track A1 to where I want it. So I'm actually gonna to wanna to fade into the other song right about here at a dip in the waveform. So I'm gonna select the audio from audio track A1 and I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard to add a marker there. And I'm gonna navigate over to my project panel and I'm gonna to go to markers. With the audio from the audio track A1, you can see where my marker is here and I'm just gonna leave a comment here fade to next song. All right, and I want this fade to occur where the driving scenes start. So I'm gonna place my playhead right at that edit where the first driving scene starts. I'm gonna click in the dark gray of our sequence in our timeline, and I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard to add a marker. Now, as you can see, the marker appears under our markers panel on the left side, and the marker is also at the top of our timeline. And I'm just gonna select this input field, and I'm going to type out fade music here. All right, I'm gonna make sure my snapping is turned on. I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard, and that's gonna take us to our ripple edit tool. I'm also gonna lock our video track and I'm gonna lock audio track a2 that way I can hover over top of the left side of this audio clip and I can click and drag and it's gonna close out any kind of gaps that are left over and if I drag it over too far I can always just click and drag this and it's gonna snap into that other marker because we do have snapping activated here so each marker from the audio track and the timeline itself is going to snap together especially if the playheads there as well that way I can always just hover over top of the left side of this audio click and drag and fill any space that is left over there from here, I'm just going to hit W on my keyboard because we have the playhead here. It's going to cut any of the audio on audio track A1 on the right side of that playhead, and it's just going to completely delete it. So if you hit W, it will clear all of that clip from the right side of the playhead. From here, I'm going to unlock audio track A2, and I'm actually going to hit tilde to expand our timeline sequence here to full screen. Tilde is the little squiggly key on the left of the one. And I'm gonna navigate my playhead to where I want it to actually dip out or end on the final clip. And I want it to end right here where there's also a dip in the waveform. So I'm gonna select the audio clip on A2 and I'm gonna hit M to add that marker there. And from here, I'm just gonna use my selection tool. I'm gonna to hover over the left side of this audio clip and I'm gonna click and drag. And I'm gonna line up this marker with the end of our clip here on the video track. From here, I'm gonna reduce the size by clicking and dragging the audio on audio track A1. So we snap and it lines up directly with the beginning of the audio on audio track A2. Now I can just click and drag this audio clip up to audio track A1 and I'm gonna navigate to the end of our video track. Once again, I'm gonna hit W on the keyboard and that's gonna delete all of the clip from the audio track on audio A1 to the right of the playhead. From here, I'm gonna hit tilde so we get out of our full screen with that timeline. So keeping in mind that I did actually want the music to change where the driving scene began. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus on my keyboard to zoom in on the timeline. And I'm gonna hit N on my keyboard and that's actually gonna take us to the rolling edit tool. With the rolling edit tool, I can select the edit in between the audio clips and I'm just gonna click and drag to align that to the playhead because I know that's where I want that audio to fade from the first music track to the second music track. Another thing we're gonna wanna do is fade the music in at the beginning. You can do this by adding keyframes and using your pen tool. However, we're just gonna go to effects and I'm gonna drop down audio transitions here and we're gonna twirl down crossfade and we're gonna start with constant gain and that's just gonna make the music fade in as the whole clip begins. So if I just click and drag this over to the audio clip on audio 
audio track A1. It's going to snap to the beginning of that clip. I'm also going to return to my selection tool by hitting V on the keyboard. And then that way I can select this audio transition and go up to effect controls. And we can see how long the duration of that is. We can also extend it if we want by hovering over the right side of it and clicking and dragging. And we can also do that by selecting it in the timeline, hovering over the right side and clicking and dragging that way as well. The next transition that we're going to want to add is the constant power transition because we want there to be constant power between the first music track and the second music track. And I'm just going to click and drag that over and I'm going to center that in between the edit. Once again, if I select this transition within the timeline, it's going to show us our parameters in the top left with effect controls. We can change the duration here and we can also align it to center at cut. We can start it at cut and we can align it to the end at cut. However, for this purpose, I'm going to want to put that at center at cut and I'm going to extend that duration from one second to two seconds. So if I just click on this input field and type two zero zero and hit enter, it's going to make it a two second transition instead of a one second transition. And as you can see, constant power is actually outlined in blue. So that means it's our default transition. If I deleted this transition and I selected the edit between each audio track and I hit command shift D on my keyboard, it's going to add that constant power transition because it is our default transition within Premiere Pro. Once again, I'm going to select that input field. I'm going to type two zero zero to make it a two second transition. And then I'm going to go to the end of our clip here by hitting the down arrow on the keyboard. And the last thing I want to do is add an audio transition of an exponential fade. That way our music is fading out with our last clip. I'm also noticing that I haven't added a dip to black video transition here. So I'm going to unlock our V1 track and I'm going to drop down video transitions. I'm going to go to dissolve and then I'm going to select the dip to black and I'm going to drag that over to our last video clip. From here I'm going to navigate to the beginning of our sequence and I'm going to go up to sequence and I'm going to render into out. That way it renders out all of our video and it plays in real time. Once our rendering is done, we can actually play this out and see how everything sounds with our transitions of the music fading in, fading to a different song, and then fading out. So hitting space on the keyboard, we'll see how this looks and sounds. Alright everybody, that concludes our tutorial on basic audio transitions. By using these audio transitions, it smooths out your video as well as transitions without having hard cuts in between audio or songs. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please subscribe and always check back for more. And as always, have a great day.